Okay, new article in the Boston Globe about Gordon Hayward and how he is very much on track to come back this year. He's already doing calf raises and everything, so he's already working on the mobility and strength of that ankle. He's going to be out of the boot completely, but he's already out of it somewhat, and then he'll have a little ankle brace on him for the next three months. But there's four months left of the uh, regular season, and a lot of people wear ankle braces anyway during games, right? So he's going to be playing in an ankle brace and you know, within a month or two, it's going to be crazy. Uh, he's going to be, um, not playing in games, but he's going to be all around the gym in the next two or three weeks. He's going to be, you know, on the elliptical and exercise bike and all of this stuff. And, uh, it's, we can just really see the light at the end of the tunnel right now. So how are the Celtics going to look with Gordon Hayward? Well, there's the, you know, there's that strong argument of just bringing Hayward off the bench. And I actually made a video just before this suggesting that um, in those games where it really makes sense to start Aaron Baines at center and Al Horford at power forward, which is actually more and more games, the more I think of it. When you see uh, Al Horford at power forward where he's more comfortable and you see him really shine like that, and then you see how, how much of an impact Aaron Baines can make defensively, uh, it's going to be a real question for Brad Stevens, especially if Gordon Hayward is not going to be 100%. Um, so who's going to sit on the bench in those games where it doesn't make sense to start Aaron Baines? No, where it does make sense to start Aaron Baines. Is it going to be Hayward, Brown, or Tatum coming off the bench? Uh, I made a previous video just two minutes ago suggesting that it should be Hayward, and not just because he's injured, but especially since he's injured. So Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown right now this year at their very young ages are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul Pierce and Gordon Hayward at their peak prime seasons, which was last year for Gordon Hayward in his contract year at the age of 26, athletic prime, as the number one option for Utah, and Paul Pierce when he was age 30, the first year of the big three with Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen. Um, before that, Paul Pierce might have put up some good stats. But his defense was off, and uh, he wasn't. his maturity level was not there until Kevin, Gar Kevin Garnett came and really held Pierce to a higher standard as far as uh, Pierce's extracurricular activities, dietary stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So you can look at these stats a little bit, but um, I really hope Gordon... Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have every opportunity in the world to put their stamp on the Celtics team. They're already doing it, averaging over 14 points a game. They're both shooting over 39% from three. Jalen Brown right there with prime Gordon Hayward and prime Paul Pierce as far as his three-point shooting in his second year, which is unbelievable. Nobody's even really talking about that. You know, everyone said this guy couldn't shoot coming out of college even though he shot exactly 39% in high school from three. But because Brown and Tatum had off years shooting the three ball in college, everyone said they can't shoot, when right now what we're seeing is they're two of the better three-point shooters in the NBA, especially Jason Tatum. So these guys have the rest of the year to f keep up this consistency and with their, with their uh, distinctly superior defense to Gordon Hayward to, to keep their claim to being the starters, no matter it's Aaron Baines starting at center or Al Horford, these guys can say, no, we are the stars. We are the young stars of the future. We are the ones getting better every day. Gordon Hayward's the guy who's already at his athletic prime, who took six years in the league to get to the level where he is. These guys are already doing it, and they're flirting with teenage years. Very, very young. Um... But I think what we're ultimately going to see is we're ultimately going to see a Celtics team when Gordon Hayward comes back. You know, maybe not until the playoffs start, but hopefully the last couple weeks of the regular season. But going into the playoffs, we may very well see um, a lot of Hayward, Brown, and Tatum. Right now, Gordon Hayward, he's getting a lot stronger because he can't really run around right now, but what he can do is lift weights. And in the pictures from the article where he went out to dinner to watch the Spurs Celtics game from a restaurant in Wellesley, Gordon Hayward's arms looking huge. 
And with that additional weight, he already came into training camp bigger than he had ever been. And if you notice, Hayward was very underwhelming in the preseason. And I think part of that is because he was playing at a heavier weight than he ever had been. But because of the way that Brown and Tatum are playing so well and so superior athletically, quickness-wise, and defensively, Gordon Hayward weighing so much could actually really help the Celtics because the stronger he is, the more able the Celtics are going to be to play him at uh, power forward, or at least he can help and switch on to power forwards and centers with his new improved, dramatically stronger, but less athletic, less mobile, less nimble uh, physique. So that would really help Hayward and help this whole trio, help the whole Celtics team and not have to start Aaron Baines too much. Of course, starting Al Horford at center, you know, the majority of the time or even uh, the vast majority of the time or even 100% of the time, that's going to hurt Al Horford personally. But in some ways, it'll help him. And in some ways, it'll help the Celtics. The Celtics would definitely be a distinctly worse rebounding team with Hayward Brown and Tatum and Irving and Al Horford in there, right? We already know that. Just like we kind of saw against the Detroit Pistons in our first game where Al Horford was trying to defend Andre Drummond and the Celtics were getting totally schooled on the boards. So Aaron Baines as the number one rated defender right now. He is no slouch, nobody to be slept on. And even a, even Gordon Hayward, our $30 million man, at least coming back from injury, there's going to be plenty of games where Aaron Baines makes more sense, maybe even a majority of the games. I'm not sure. But with Gordon Hayward getting stronger, that definitely helps him be able to stay on the court with all of these guys as the starting unit. And then you just stagger the starters' minutes so that you always have Hayward or Tatum or Kyrie Irving um, along with, you know, hopefully one other starter like Al Horford or something playing with the second unit. So uh, a lot more offensive firepower, obviously, and bench scoring is our biggest weakness by far. But even if we stuff all these guys into the starting lineup, uh, there's still plenty of ability to stagger their minutes so that we have more offensive firepower playing with the second unit. But Jason Tatum, he's going to be playing in the Rising Stars Challenge. Uh, Jalen Brown probably is as well, no doubt. And Jason Tatum also going to get invited to the three-point contest. You can bet on that, right? Just like uh, Devin Booker, I believe, got invited last year or the year before. Uh, the NBA's leading three-point shooter and a high-profile high rookie is most definitely going to get invited to the NBA three-point contest. And uh, he can really put his mark on this team so that when Gordon Hayward comes back, um, he may very well be third fiddle. But luckily for J Gordon Hayward, and n not just third fiddle this year when he's coming back from injury, but even next year, third fiddle. But it's going to be okay because even as third fiddle among these guys, Gordon Hayward will still likely be able to start with his advanced strength now. And even next year, these guys can all start together. Next year, it's going to be easier to fully integrate these guys into the starting lineup together and uh, adjust the offense and just all that chemistry issues and ball movement issues and efficiency issues and who takes what shot. Gordon Hayward early definitely seemed to be struggling adapting into the Celtics. We saw he only averaged about eight or nine points in the preseason. In fact, I believe Brown and Tatum actually outscored him per game in the preseason. So the fact that they're playing just as good as, uh, arguably just as good as Gordon Hayward and Paul Pierce did in their prime at such a young age, um, it shouldn't be any surprise uh, when they continue to be better players next year, even next year, when Gordon Hayward is fully healthy. So this may bring up some issue. No, I don't think Gordon Hayward would push for a trade next year. I don't think the Celtics would have any interest in, tr in trading him. Marcus Morris is a guy who could get discontent, uh, and he's got two years on his contract. So keep in mind we may very well be trading Marcus Morris next year because uh, obviously Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are far ahead of schedule. Marcus Morris thought he was going to be starting. He's struggling with a knee right now. But with Gordon Hayward coming back later this year, 
and going into next year. Marcus Morris, definitely on the outside looking in. Hopefully he's a good team player and embraces that bench role and we're all good. But let's just look at this real quick, guys. Um, so minutes per game, Pierce and Hayward in their primes um, played significantly more minutes than Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So I hope going forward, Brad Stevens, at least every once in a while, give him 38, 40 minutes a game, right? Especially if we're losing, especially if it's a close game. These guys can play a lot more minutes at least once in a while, so they really need to be given that opportunity. And uh, field goal attempts, Hayward and Pierce far above Brown and Tatum. Tatum, one thing he can really do to get better this year is increase his field goal attempts uh, from the two-point range, including you know creating his own shot in the mid-range, which was his bread and butter in high school and in college but a guy who's not been getting those looks and he's not, or at least he's not been looking for him himself. Um, and then one other thing that, uh, so from two point percentage, you see all these guys are just about identical, right? Just about identical. And J Jalen Brown actually is shooting a better percentage from two than all of these guys, which is pretty impressive. Um, but from three, we see that, with uh, Tatum's legendary 52% right now, uh, we see that Jalen Brown is right there with Gordon Hayward and Pierce in their absolute prime of efficiency for the most part. Uh, free throw attempts is another it is another place where Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can really improve. Uh, we see that they're far trailing Pierce and Hayward in their primes. Uh, when those guys, you know, Paul Pierce, that was his bread and butter, right? getting to the free throw line and he got so many points that way well Jason Tatum he can really improve in that department keep in mind 3.8 3.7 these are still really good numbers by NBA standards but th these guys obviously both Brown and Tatum have the potential to get there another two or three times a game and that can really f set them into that you know 20 20 point per game type scorer type status in this league especially if they get a little more minutes as well um, free throw percentage Tatum right there with Prime Pierce and Hayward uh, but it's Jalen Brown this is his one big weakness is a uh, free throw percentage just shy of 60 percent so that's one area that uh, Jalen Brown really needs to improve but rebounding wise Jalen Brown uh, beats all of these guys and Jason Tatum also beats Hayward and Pierce and Jalen Brown, the one guy on this list who is playing shooting guard. So that makes it all the more impressive. But assists is another area where Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum can improve Paul Pierce and Gordon Hayward, superior playmakers um, than Brown and Tatum are so far. Um, steals roughly the same. Pierce with a slight edge here. And blocks Jason Tatum way better than all the rest of these guys. And uh, almost triple the amount of blocks as uh, Gordon Hayward. So uh, just one more evidence data point that su suggests that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, especially Jason Tatum, better defenders than Gordon Hayward, even at his prime last year in Utah. Uh, they both just have superior athleticism and length, all of that good stuff. Um, Turnovers, Brown and Tatum, very impressive, very impressive. Uh, they're handling the ball less, but, the, you know, for young guys, they are keeping it under control. Jason Tatum with less than half the turnovers of Paul Pierce. That was Paul Pierce's big weakness, wasn't it? He was always turning the ball over. Um, so points per game, we see that um, with the, with the um, more field goal attempts and the more free throw attempts, it wasn't a matter of efficiency or anything like that. It was a matter of more field goal attempts, more minutes, and more free throw attempts. That's what gave Hayward and Pierce the edge. They were the number one options on their team. None of them were playing behind Kyrie Irving, a second option or anything like that, right? So a couple more uh, field goal attempts for these guys and a couple more free throw attempts. And these guys are going to be right there, right there, even if they averaged a little, little less than... Uh, those number one options. It doesn't mean they're not as good. It doesn't mean they couldn't do this on different teams. I think these both are right there to be challenging. 
Hayward and Pierce at their absolute primes. And uh, true shooting, we see that Jason Tatum, head and shoulders above Pierce, Hayward, and Brown. Uh, it's incredible. And uh, Jalen Brown, the reason he is significantly lower than Pierce and T Hayward is because of that free throw uh, percentage, that low percentage, sub 60%. But if he gets that up a little bit, uh, he'll be right there, pretty impressive, or maybe just shy. But his two-point percentage is better than these two, better than all of them. And his three-point percentage is right there with Pierce and Hayward. So that's very impressive. And um, and Jalen Brown actually shooting more um, three three-pointers a higher percentage of his shots are three-pointers than any of these guys. And that's uh, very, very impressive, especially considering Brown is also shooting just shy of 40%. Uh, but we see this free throw rate. Um, wow. Tatum's actually really, really good. He's getting, he's just not taking a lot of uh, field goal attempts. That's what's throwing him off, or, or free throws. Uh, but anyway, guys, one share per 48 Paul Pierce and Jason Tatum. This is this is the year the Celtics won the championship, right? And Paul Pierce was their number one option at his absolute prime. Uh, Jason Tatum, win shares virtually identical. So I don't know what exactly that says, but it's something good, okay? It's just something good. We'll leave it at that. Probably portends well for the way the season is going to go for the team and for Jason Tatum going forward. But we are seeing big, big things from these two young guys, Tatum and Brown although Brown's win share per 48 significantly lower as we see. Um, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, you think Tatum, Hayward, and Brown are all going to coexist well? Uh, you think the Celtics team can incorporate Gordon Hayward on the fly at the end of this regular season and going into the playoffs? Or do you think Hayward should stick strictly to the bench as a way of integrating him and uh, and then over the summer, integrate Hayward, Brown, and Tatum all into that starting lineup with Kyrie Irving and Al Horford. Do you think that's the way they should do it? That probably makes more sense. Just bring Gordon Hayward off the bench at the end of this regular season and in the playoffs. Keep things simple because we saw that Hayward didn't necessarily integrate right away with that starting unit. And uh, we've obviously seen Brown, Tatum, Horford and Kyrie Irving have incredible um, chemistry and on-court success, uh, whether Aaron Baines starts in that last spot or Marcus Moore. So uh, the different ways to look at it, it would be very interesting to see if the Celtics can incorporate Hayward, Brown, and Tatum on the fly this year. If everyone can make it work, everyone stays looking for their shot, shoots the open shot, passes when it's open, uh, our offense could suddenly get a big surge with Gordon Hayward and his passing ability and his uh, effective and true shooting percentages. Uh, but, you know, going in the playoffs, defense and rebounding wins championships is generally the rule. We are very lucky to have a guy like Aaron Baines. And in the playoffs, especially when the game slows down and defense becomes more important and those rebounds make all the difference in the world, there's going to be a huge argument for keeping Aaron Baines. And if that's the case, I really hope it's these young guys, Brown and Tatum, getting the getting the chance to keep those starting spots and to keep a injured coming back, not fully 100% Gordon Hayward uh, on the bench. But let me know what you guys think. I'll see you soon. Peace.